Hello everyone, welcome to our video on WSO2 API Manager's latest feature edition for GraphQL subscriptions. I am Dishani Vellapili from WSO2 API Manage team. Let's first see what a subscription is. Nowadays, GraphQL APIs are very popular for business use cases with event-driven architecture for interactive and immediate use experience. Subscriptions extend GraphQL APIs for push-based solutions. This addresses the existing underfetching and overfetching problems common in standard streaming or event-based APIs. In a GraphQL subscription, clients send long-lasting GraphQL read operations and get updated results when a particular server-side event occurs. Commonly, the updated results are pushed from the server to subscribing clients via WebSocket protocol. This is why we need an API management solution to manage your GraphQL subscription backends. It secures your backend via gateway layer authentication, authorization, rate limiting, query complexity, depth validation, and make monetization easier. So we are pleased to introduce API Manager 410 supporting GraphQL subscriptions over its WebSocket transport. So we have a sample GraphQL backend news application where authors can come and create a new news blog post. Once published, this is notified to the subscribed users of the application. We will be doing this with a simple Node.js GraphQL backend. It has mainly four operations, two querying the blog post, one for creating blog post, and finally for receiving notifications of blog post. This is how we will be exposing our Node.js backend through API Manager Gateway. Once a user register for a new post, sending a subscription query, Gateway first authenticate the request and authorize the user for the requested subscription operation. Then perform the rate limiting, query validation, query complexity and depth validation. Whenever some other client writes and publishes a new post, the server will trigger the previously received subscribing client query and send that data back to the client. Gateway again intercept the response message for authentication, authorization and rate limiting purposes. Finally, it will hand over the notified message to the client. Meanwhile, Gateway will also publish data to Corio API Insights to get useful business insights of API usages. Gateway can apply security policies based on role-based resource scopes. In a sample, only users with subscriber role are allowed to subscribe to new posts. So this is the node backend I am using, serving GraphQL backend in both HTTP and WebSockets. Now let's go and invoke a sample query to get all blog posts. I already have two blog posts added to my backend. Now let's go to our publisher portal and create a new GraphQL API using the sample news app schema. I will add a name, version, a context and finally an endpoint as the HTTP URL of our backend server. You can see the subscription operation from here. I have already created a shared scope for the subscriber role. Let's go and attach the scope to the subscription operation. Here we have the GraphQL schema. I am going to now attach an application subscription policy as well. This is the one I have already created. Then we have to cut a revision and deploy in the gateway. Finally, publish the API to the developer portal. If you also go to the runtime configs, you can see the default complexity values assigned for subscription operation and other fields of blog post. So altogether, we have a complexity of uh, 5 for the whole subscription operation. Now I'm in my developer portal and going to subscribe to the news app API using an application with the application subscription policy I previously created. Now let's go and generate a token for this application. I'm going to generate a token without this scope. Then copy the token and invoke the API like this. I am going to select my subscription operation and select the fields I expect to be returned. 
see I am getting the scope validation error as this is a secured API resource. Now let's go and get a valid token with the correct scope. Let's copy the token to invoke the same operation. So it's connected but we did not receive results. So I'm going to do a direct mutation. Here now I have received the data about new blog post addition. Now let's do another mutation. The ID of the blog post is now 4. So you can see the ID is also 4 from the, for the subscription operation response. API Manager Gateway also validate the query payload against the schema once a subscription query payload is received. So let's add an invalid field and CR response. There. So now it is also an invalid payload error. Another API management capability gateway adds to the subscription is the query complexity and depth validation and also lastly rate limiting. So max de query depth and complexity values help to prevent your backend getting exhausted because of really complex and large queries. For this case, my application subscription policy have a max complexity value of 4. So let's go and check how this works. I have a pro uh, payload with total complexity of 5 and I'm getting the two complex error now. So let's remove one field and make total complexity to 4. So now I am invoking a mutation from my backend. Now I should get an, I should get the data that I have added. Now as similar to GraphQL query mutation rate limiting subscription also apply rate limiting on app level at subscription level and APIO resource level. So I have a resource uh, app subscription policy of 5 per minute which means connection will only allow 5 web socket events per minute and if it exceeds it will throttle out. So I'm going to now invoke my subscription operation and let the backend send an event. Here I received it. Now let the backend send more than 5 events to throttle out. So I'm getting the throttle out error now. Hope you were able to get a glimpse of how WebSocket based GraphQL subscriptions work in API Manager 410. We invite you to try this out. Thank you for watching.